Greetings, Commanders! Mini here! Welcome to another episode of Elite Dangerous Over-Engineering, or should I say the final episode of Elite Dangerous Over-Engineering. Why? Well, Engineering 3.0 came out, and, uh, well, we're gonna have to take a look at that in the future, but for the time being, this is all the time I have for right now. So what are we doing today? We're gonna be taking a look at those Grade 5 Inertial Impact Rapid Fire Burst Lasers that I had and exchanging them for some Grade 5 Efficient Inertial Impact Burst Lasers, for the Federal Burst Ship. Roll the intro! Okay, Brew Tarquin. I'm here to modify my inertial burst lasers, which previously had rapid fire as one. And the main reason is they're way too hot. <laughs> The damage is nice, but they are toasty. So toasty, in fact, that they often cause an unplanned rapid disassembly of your spacecraft. So I think a few modifications are in order to fix this uh, very serious problem. All right, let's start with the itty bitty guys and just go from there. So unexpected emission data. You can get these from combat oriented vessels. Normally I get these from smaller ships and uh, that's it. Cadmium, you can go to the duck planet where I normally get the technetium, but uh, the duck planet is also good for cadmium. And then proto heat radiators, these are very not fun. You have to get these from going to systems in boom conditions and then looking for high grade emission signal sources, and then hopping in and hoping you get proto heat radiators. I would recommend an independent system, not an empire or a federation system, an independent system in boom conditions. And no other statuses like war, otherwise you'll end up getting a bunch of other random shit. So independent boom, high grade emission signal sources. If you need cadmium, just go to eddb.io, go to the planetary body tool, search for cadmium in the planetary list, put in your reference system, and then BAM! You found a planet nearby with cadmium, and then you just gotta go fly there and shoot rocks. You know, all that fun stuff. Uh, another good way of doing unexpected emission data is sitting in supercruise and scanning ships. If you're smart enough, you should be able to figure out how to program a macro to do that for you. That way you jump into supercruise, scan about 20 or 30 times with a delay of about five and a half seconds, and then you hit scan or next target again. And if you're far enough out, you should be able to scan everything. And then after that, you disengage from supercruise, jump back into supercruise after your cooldown timer, count that too, set that into the macro. And then, you know, you can just program this macro and then hit one button and then walk away. Because, you know, that's gameplay! That's how I got mine. I'm not running around scanning ships for random data. Thanks, Frontier. Anyway, rant over. Let's go ahead and do this over engineering bullshit and cue the music because no one wants to listen to rolls and bullshit. So let's go! Oh yeah, uh, view cost and generate! Alrighty, now that our engineering is complete, it is time to undock, head home, and do some testing with these new weapons. 
but uh, I don't think I have time to actually do some legit combat testing, so we'll probably just have to see the difference in between the original version of the burst lasers versus the new version, see how bad the jitter is and the capacitor draw. Oh, I should probably start turning. Come on. Turn, 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 turn! Damn it! All right, I'm gonna go repair my ship and then uh, we'll refit the other one. So I'll see you in a moment, commanders. Now one of the primary issues with the previous version of these burst lasers is the heat. So take a look at this. Unfortunately, the audio was corrupted during the recording. As you can see here, the uh, weapon distributor draw is quite high and the temperature climbs ever so quickly as the weapon's capacitor decreases, leading to insanely high heat levels before the capacitor is even drained. So to fix that, we went efficient. Now these are the new efficient inertial impact burst lasers. And as you can see, with four pips to weapons, heat does not get too high and it's able to fire for much longer and no overheating issues detected with just the new version. Also, the shot spread is not as bad as the old version. No pips to weapons, fire test. One pip to weapons, fire test. Two pips to weapons, fire test. Three pips to weapons, fire test. Well, at least now, I can shoot my guns all damn day. Which is awesome. Because before with the rapid fire, just about now I'd almost be running out of energy. But with four pips of weapons, I can shoot all damn day. Whatever color I want. It's great. Anyway, Commanders, thanks for watching the final episode of Elite Dangerous Over Engineering. This is Mini, signing out.